Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're down somewhat this morning, but we're so glad that you're here. So, Father's Day, Happy Father's Day to all our fathers out there. Uh, in Sunday school, we had 20. All the classes were low. Uh, Sunday school often was $1,407. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. David Jones. Uh, did anyone else have a birthday? I didn't have this. Anniversaries, Candice and Daniel. You see David or Cand Candice and Daniel wish them a happy birthday or a happy anniversary. Anyone else have an anniversary? That is. Okay. I have a story I want to share. It's entitled, Puppies for Sale. A store owner was tagging a sign above his door that said, Puppies for Sale. You know, signs like that will attract children. They see it. They, they won't look at the puppies. And a little girl came by and saw it, and so she went inside. And she said, how much are you going to sell your puppies for? He said, well, this has got to be a long time ago. It'll be somewhere between 30 and 50 dollars. So you know that's a long time ago. So you talk about puppies now. They got any pedigree and they're talking about 500 dollars or more. Um, I said, I said, the little girl, the little boy. He reached in his pocket and pulled out some change. He stood there in Canada. He said, I have $2.37. And I pay that down on a puppy and pay you the rest, and I'll pay you 50 cents a month until it's paid off. <laughs> and uh, the owner called, and he whistled, and the puppies came out with their mom. There's five little fur balls, and one of them was lagging behind. The little boy singled that one out. He said, What's wrong with that little puppy? And the store owner said, Well, I carried him to bed, and he explained that puppy was born without a hip socket on one side. So he's never going to be able to grow and do things like other puppies. And uh, you wouldn't want him anyway. And the little boy said, that's the puppy I want to buy. And the store said, no, no, you don't want him. Uh, he'll never be a, a good dog. He needs that. And uh, the boy said, that's the one I, I want. I'll buy him. And the store said, no. I'll give him to you. The said, no. That puppy is as valuable as the rest of them. I'm going to buy him. I'll pay you $2.37 and 50 cents a month. A store owner in county. If you really want to buy this dog, I'll sell him to you for $2.37. He's surprised, so he said, you know, he'll never run into play like other puppies. Little boy reached down and rolled his pants leg. He had a badly twisted, crippled left leg. He had a big head in there. He looked at the store and said, Well, I don't run very well either. And little puppy needs somebody who understands. <clears throat> at times, we all need someone that understands us, don't we? Isn't it great that we have a heavenly father that not, not only understands us, but knows more about us than we know about ourselves? A heavenly father loves us with a love that we really can soon and very soon. Let us all stand and sing soon and very soon the all three verses.
<laughs> and number 473, just a closer walk with thee.
ask you a question. How can anybody abuse beautiful children like this? Something's wrong with somebody, and it's called sin. And uh, we love these children. And I uh, pray God's blessings upon them. You going down so I can't hear you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask a question this morning. What makes a person a good dad? Only a preacher would say that. <laughs> what makes a great dad? What makes a person a good dad? Give me some characteristics. Providers. Provider. Loving. Time. Loving. Listening. Teacher. Teacher. Disciplinarian. Disciplinarian. What does a disciplinarian mean? A disciplinarian does not need to embitter the child nor exasperate the child. So you got to make sure you do the right discipline. And it's not always a spanking on the bottom. But there are times when it is necessary as well. And think about it, as I observe our world today, a lot of the world today is not doing the spanking on the bottom. We don't do that anymore, preacher. Why don't you? You know, the Bible says of our God that it, God those that God loves, He chases. And if you haven't been chastened by God, either through the physical act or by what only he can do, then maybe you need to investigate whether or not you are a child of God. You know, if God loves you, he's going to correct you. A person who is a good dad is loving, kind, filled with empathy and compassion. He is consistently available, not only to say, I love you, but even by just the hug that goes with life. He is a dad who takes walks in the park, sings songs by a campfire, goes on fishing trips, does musical jamborees and family decorated the Christmas tree. Those are where you find memories in life. A good father is a man who goes to countless soccer games. That's what I did. Ball games. Musical recitals. I did that several times as well. And uh, you have a boy, aren't you? Every dad wants a boy. But I had three girls. And when they started coming two at a time, I told Mama, we'll quit it right here. But God blesses us with children in life. A great dad is strong, filled with wisdom, compassionate, empathetic, for the things that go on in life. You know, somebody once told me, children don't come with a handbook. I would disagree. But here's a handbook. God gives us in His Word all the things we need to know about raising children. In fact, this morning, I want us to look at, look at six lessons of raising children, the do's and don'ts, of life. And I've given you an outline. Uh, if you picked up one, if not, they're back there. We'll go back there and get one for you. But I want you to look at this outline. There, and the reason I did the outline is because there are so many different scripture passages this morning. And I'm not going to read all of this, but I want you to take these home and you read the passage and look at what's going on. Lesson number one, you need a good compass in life. It is amazing to me as we read Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, that God had just finished His great creation, and the Bible says that God saw that it was, and He uses this term, very good. But then in about ten generations, come to chapter 6 
And it says this, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Imagine Noah trying to raise his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, in the environment of that world and that day. Oh, my mama, daddies especially, but mamas too, it's hard to be a parent. It's hard because they go to school <coughs> and get a mentality that you don't teach them at home. And they come home and say, but my teacher said, or the kids at school said, that's when you need to sit down let's see what the Bible says. He said, we, we don't have a biblical worldview. We have a worldly worldview. <coughs> but here's Noah. He's building an ark. And he's facing criticism. All of us can handle momentary criticism. Somebody makes a critical statement to you. And it goes in and, and for a moment and so forth. But you don't... But Moses was constantly, day in and day out, hearing the criticism of the world, you big dummy, you building a boat. It's never rain. How ridiculous can a person be? And that went on for some 80 to 100 years while Noah is building that ark. And he's trying to raise Shem, Ham, and Jacob in that environment. How difficult was that for him? But Noah had a compass. He knew the direction that God wanted him to go. Dad, may your children never see you conforming to the patterns of this world. What should you do? Turn to the book of Romans. <coughs> Romans the 12th chapter. <coughs> I want you to hear what God's Word says to us. You've heard this passage, I'm sure, preached on. I've preached on it before. Paul, writing to the church at Rome, says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, he's talking to believers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. To who? To God. Every day, you need to get up and say, Lord, I'm your instrument today. Lord, use me today. That's not just daddies. Daddies to be. That's for mamas. That's for all of us. And then he goes on in verse 2 and says, Do not be conformed to this world. Don't let the world pour you into its mold and fashion you like it. But he says, but be transformed. <clears throat> the word transform there is a word metamorphosis. Somebody give me an illustration of metamorphosis. Butterfly. Butterfly. Caterpillar. How does it, it starts out as one of those kicky caterpillars, and some of them can sting you. And they're ugly. But when they go through the process of metamorphosis, a beautiful butterfly comes out. And by the way, let me make another statement. Don't try to short circuit the process of metamorphosis. If you try to help the butterfly get out, you will in essence kill the butterfly. And folks, if you try to stop the process of transformation in your life, you're going to short circuit what God desires to do for you. Be transformed. And, and dads, you need to make sure your children don't see you conform into this world, but rather inviting the potter to come along in your life and fashion you and remold you and transform your mind into what He wants you to be. You know, that's a tough process. Because we like to do it our way. Don't we? But God wants us to allow Him to work through us and to make us into life. Lesson number two. 
There's a need for force correction. Second Chronicles 33 gives us the story of Manasseh, one of the kings of the southern kingdom. Manasseh became king at the age of 12 years. Who was Manasseh's daddy, by the way? His daddy's name was Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a good king. Now, there were days when there was some bitterness in Hezekiah's life. God corrected him. But I want you to look at that passage with me to what Manasseh did. Manasseh had a good daddy. He had a good upbringing. But did he make the right choices? Not in any way. Look at verse 2 in the 33rd chapter of the book of 2 Chronicles. When you got it, say, I got it. Look at verse 2. But Manasseh did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had <coughs> cast out before the children of Israel. Hezekiah had destroyed all the altars to Baal. He destroyed all the uh, poles that were erected to Azeroth, the, the female pagan goddess. He had instilled the law in the people. But here comes Manasseh along, the very next king, and says, I'm destroying all of The Bible says he did that which was basically right in his sight, not God's sight. Folks, our world today does not see God in everything that they see in life. You see, a biblical world worldview puts God into everything that we do. Your job, your family, your pleasure. God needs to be in all of it. Amen? amen. It's okay to say amen. I'm not going to faint. But Manasseh did all of this. He began to reinstitute Baal worship. He set up a carved image even in the temple in Jerusalem. That's the oath. But how did God bring about course correction in Manasseh's life? Once you get the vision of what happens here. He sent the Assyrian army and he was taken captive. He had a Call put in his nose to be led around and taken to a dungeon prison dungeon in Babylon. And there in that prison, Manasseh said, Lord, I've messed up. Lord, please use me again. And God restored him and forgave him and allowed him to return to Jerusalem to rule again as king in Judah. There are needs of course correction sometimes. Is there need of a course correction in your life? <coughs> Are you doing... If you would come up here and stand right here and God sit here at this podium and God says, is everything right in your life? What would you say? Every Sunday that we come into God's house, God's here. And God wants to bless us in every way. Lesson number three. Trusting God for the unknown future. Genesis chapter 12. This is part of the Sunday school lesson this morning. Abraham. Called, well, I got to keep Abram at this time. God will change his name to Abraham. But Abraham is living in Ur of the Chaldeans down in what is now modern day Iraq. God comes along to him and says, I want you to get up all your belongings, all, your, all that belongs to you, and I want you to set out to a place that I will show you. I want to ask you a question. How many of you would take that kind of journey with God? You don't know where you're going. You don't know the final prospects. 
But you say, God, I trust you. <coughs> Just make sure I get to where I want to go. That's what we used to say, isn't it? You know, there are certain things about the future that none of us know. I hope that God will say of me that I was a good dad to my children. And I, 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 I many times wish I could talk to them more easily than we do. But there are many things about the future we cannot do. There's a journey ahead of us that God calls us to. That only God can bless us in. Lesson number four. Don't overlook your child's wanderings. 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel is a passage in which we introduce to a man by the name of Samuel later on. But Samuel uh, it will, will be taken in by the priest Eli. <coughs> I want you to understand something about Eli first. Eli had two sons. He had a son named Hophni and a son named Phineas. By the way, those are Egyptian names, not Hebrew names. Eli is a high priest under God Almighty. And he gives his children Egyptian names. Folks, something's wrong with that. And I've heard all kinds of names in our world today. Some kids get names, names that I can't even pronounce. Because I, I'm having difficulty pronouncing my own name sometimes. But Phineas and Hophni were not holy children. In fact, they did everything that God did not want them. Look in chapter 2, verse 12. They had no regard for God. They had no regard for God. They are children of the high priest, but they have no regard for God. They are, they are treated with contempt, the offerings made unto Him, as well as those that were brought to Shiloh. They lay with the women who tended to the main gate into the tent of meeting. Eli would rebuke them, but Eli would not remove them from their responsibilities. Folks, there are some things in a church you don't do. In a church you don't put unborn believers in charge of things in the church. People who are doing known sin, you don't put them in charge of things. Well, they will correct themselves. No, they won't. I mean, you're looking at me like, preacher, you done gone off the deep end here. But you need to respect their wanderings. You need to know about their wanderings. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6, it says this. God disciplines the ones He loves, and He chases everyone He accepts as a son. In other words, God disciplines His children. But as a mom and daddy in life, you do not need to embitter your children. Turn to Colossians 3.21. Let me give you a couple of verses here. Colossians, the third chapter, 31st verse. I believe that's the right one. No, that's not, that's not the right one. 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be disturbed. You know, there were times when I disciplined our children and sometimes I didn't, I really didn't do it the right way. But I had to go back and say, I still love you. I still care for you. And when they're wandering, 
And when they're away from where God wants them to be, you've got to assure them that you love them regardless of their sin. But you do need to point out their sin. Don't exasperate them. This is in Ephesians 6 4. But we as mamas and daddies need with great humbleness and gentleness and a constant willingness to forgive. Show our children that we care for their personal well being before God Almighty. And that God will bless them and everyone. Lesson number five the dangers of favoritism. If you got just one child, you heap all the favoritism on that one child. But when you got more than one child, sometimes it's difficult. And I want to use myself as an experience and Linda will get on to me about this later. When you got a child who is quote unquote a missionary, the other two can say, well, you love her more than you love us. I don't love her more than I love her. And I don't do more for her than I do for the other two. <clears throat> Somehow know that we can, we as human beings can get things in our mind that are not what's right. But Jacob has 12 sons. The baby of the family is a little boy by the name of Joseph. He is the baby of his old age. And he's the baby by his favorite wife. And so what does Jacob do? He makes a coat of many colors. Now, don't, don't misunderstand something here. Joseph was not without sin in this whole situation. Joseph was proud to be daddy's baby. He was proud to be the favorite son of Papa. And he went out, and the dad said, go out and check on your brothers. And he went out there one day just strutting along. <clears throat> now, God had a plan in all of this. But number one, Jacob made a mistake favoring that one son over his others. And Joseph made a mistake in strutting in it. Be careful. But you don't show more love for one than the other. Teach your children in the ways of the Lord, according to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Lesson number 6. In the world in which we live today, there are many dads and mamas who are abusive, who are non loving for unkind, and let me leave this one other turn, and God haters. They don't want to talk about God. They don't want you to say, well, the Lord told me, no, no, you don't do that. Scripture says we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. None of us dads here are perfect or even close to being perfect. But, Dad, none of us need to fail at the responsibility of being the dad. <clears throat> we ought to always choose to emulate God in all we do. When you get advice, where do you get advice from? Newspaper? I don't really do many newspapers anymore. Parents. Parents, somebody at work, some colleague. Well, look, right here is where you need to go first of all. And all of you daddies, 
and we got a mama here to be as well. You need to make sure you got a Bible and you read it. Get your advice right here. Because there's no better place in life. If God were to ask you today, how are things in your life? He's asking you this question. What would you say? Turn with me very briefly to Ezekiel. I came, I read this verse the other day in my devotional and I said, whoa. Ezekiel, the 33rd, uh, third chapter, verse 6, 18. This is God speaking to his prophet and telling his prophet, I've got a word for you to give to the people. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him no warning. Nor speaketh to warn the wicked from their wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But so listen to the last part of this verse. But his blood will I require at your hand. I'm dead at dads here today. Be the dad God wants you to be. Mamas to be. Be the mama God wants you to be. That's your warning. You may not like it, but that's the word of God. And folks, all of us have that responsibility. The world we're living in today is going to hell in a handbasket. And we're sitting on the sideline. I can't do anything about it. And that's our biggest problem. We don't get involved. You bow with me, prayer, please. Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given to us. Father, thank you for all the dads that are here, the dads to be. I pray your blessings upon each one of them, Father. May they look to your word for the examples that they need to see, Father, to be the dad that you want them to be. May they be loving, may they be caring, May they do all that is to bring that child up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We pray for Grace and too, as she's expecting twins. Father, bless her. And Father, prepare her to be the mama that you want her to be. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Father, for this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sandy, what number, please, ma'am? <coughs> 413, let's stand together as we sing.
You'll get a new perspective from God when you do. God bless you. Have a good day. Enjoy Father's. Hope you can take you out and buy you a T-bone steak. I'm going to go eat fish somewhere. God bless you. Have a good day. Let's bow together as we pray. Let's go eat fish. Your great and gracious Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise your name, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. Lord, just thank you for these moments. Lord, thank you for these wonderful moments. Lord, just forgive us for our sins. And Lord, let us just lift our eyes and put our trust and faith in you. In your name I pray. Amen.